right, so um, I, I don't know if everybody knows about breaking in guitar cabinets. <laughs> um, I've obviously owned a ton of cabinets over the years. Um, and, you know, I've done it. I, you know, there's some people that say just send a, a tone through it. I've done that. Um, usually I, do, I just get a loop going. And what I do is, so I record like a DI. So this is a little DI right here. Let me make sure this doesn't come plowing through the track. But here's the... And what I wanted for me, I like to get kind of around the guitar. I do some lower chugging. I think we're, in, I think this is maybe in D, but um, you know, I'll do some low chugging, some chords, and some high stuff. Kind of activate, you know, I guess different aspects of the speaker. And what I did was, I've I've had this cabinet now a few days. I've probably run it. I've probably played it, played on it for an hour or two because I had clients in from. London, so we've been tracking vocals, but probably played through an hour or two, but it's probably been running this loop for probably 15, 16 hours over the last three days. And what I, this is just how I do it. I always start the first few hours low volume. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll, like for an hour or two, kind of like that. It's still pretty loud. If you open this, you'd be like, no, not really. But just kind of like let him, let him start to move up and up. And I like, I like breaking them in with maces. Just, I don't know, they got more something. And then little by little, turn it up. And then once, once I, once it's been running a few hours, I'll turn it up pretty good. Like it's loud in there. And then, yeah, and then, and, uh, and then, like if if at night I'm running it, I run it kind of medium loud because I've got neighbors back there. Even though it's somewhat soundproofed, you know, you don't want to. But that's that's the deal. So now that I've run this thing down, and I've been running between channel two and three on the recto, or two and three on the recto. So just giving it a little bit different. I've been running some pedals. It doesn't make a difference, but the main thing is that you just let it pump for a while and I guess stretch out the coils or whatever. So uh, we're gonna fire this cab up, make sure it's good. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah. All right, so I wanna just, I showed you about the breaking in process. I mean, it's not an exact science. Again, I just kinda like to play around the guitar. So yeah, it was, tuned down to drop D so I got some like you know and I used a couple different channels in the in the rectifier I was mostly playing it through the 800 when I was playing but but I was breaking it in with the uh, with the rectifier but uh yeah so this is it in the rectifier and I've got right now I've got I'm kind of messing around with it I've got the king of tone on yellow channel the yellow side with the Maxon 808 and the EQ with the same kind of cutting a little 6K, or cutting a fair amount of 6K and uh, a little cut at 800 and then a little cut at 100 or a little cut at 200 and a little more cut at 100. So here it is, and this is channel three uh, in um, modern mode. <laughs> And this, like, I, I'm kind of new to this multiple uh, overdrive or gain thingy. Like, I'm running the yellow side on the on the analog man, King of Tone, and I'm running the 808. So here it is, King of Tone, yellow, and 808. Now I shut off the King of the 808 and put on the red side of the King of Tone, so now it's both sides of the King of Tone. Now I'll 
shut off the red side and now put the 808 on. <laughs> It's like the 808 is a little more blistering back to the red side. So now it's making its own yellow and red. Maybe better for rhythms like that, you know, a little, little less. There's like a like a sheerness to the to the 808. Here's the 808 again. It's a little more compressed and more like surreal sounding back to king of tone both sides yellow and red <laughs> This is it. We're we're getting close. We'll go yellow. 808 now it's yellow and red king of time so let's see what we think so the first one is here is uh Yellow and 808. is nice it, it sounds more normal you know i'm an i'm kind of a sick person mentally man so i, I like the 808 maybe better i don't know yellow and 808 more like yeah Yeah, I mean, they're both cool. The the, 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 the the King of Tone is more balanced. Like, it retains more of the amp sound, so it has, like, a little bit more mid-range. It feels like there's some sort of... The, they always say the 80, you know, the Tube Screamers, like, accentuate mid-range. I don't know. It feels like there's more of, like, a... The 808 feels more intrusive on the sound, but it sounds cool. But it definitely, like, feels like... It's more hi-fi or more like Scoopy, maybe? I don't know. Here's yellow 808. Yellow and red. Yellow and 808. I'm 
know. The yellow and red's probably more... I don't know. I kind of like the yellow in the 808 because it just makes me feel something different. Here's the yellow in the 808. <laughs> we're we're gonna start I'm gonna record some I'm gonna do one more video and record some of me working on getting a multi-amp thing going and like panning and you know marshals and maces so I just kind of wanted to get your take on it but this is the mace the rectifier the dual rec going through the new straight cabinet and oh the other reason why I need to do this this morning is because my kids want the box. I think they're going to make a fort out of it. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I got to make sure, like, the amp, the cab is cool before you guys make a fort of it. So I'm like, well, let me let me do this. So so here is, here is uh, this is a PR20. This is that straight cabinet. Here's a PR20 on the Vintage 30. And here's the 57 on the Vintage 30. Yeah, it's the PR20 is a little darker. It's a little like more. It's almost kind of like takes the place of like a like a ribbon mic. But anyway, here's the 57 and the PR20. Man, that cab is, I love this cab. So it was a good, it's good. And I sold the Port City 212 yesterday. And he's going to be happy and everybody's going to be happy. So here, we're now on to the back. To, this is the yellow in the 808. This is with the PR20. And 57. Yeah, this is this is cool. I mean, obviously, my selection of all this will be once both amps are up because they're both going to get the same front end. I'm not trying to do different pedals for different. The, 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 keep it simple. So, but those are basically my flavors. And then I've also got an EP booster, which I'm not. It's not on. And I've got the the woodshed compressor, which is not on. This already feels like it doesn't even need the ad. So. But I do have the G G7 on. It was yellow and 808, and here's yellow and red. Probably a better sound to me. You know, yellow and red. That's just a killer sound either way. And yellow and 808. Yellow, red. Yellow, 808. The yellow 808, it, there's, it's more animated. It sounds a little like cartoony or metallic. It's got like a, like it's more, it's got like a, like a, not a sizzle or like a, it's like blistering. I don't know. That's, that's what I hear in my head. Yellow and 808. <laughs> Yellow and red. Yeah, there's it, it, the, the the red it doesn't. It, it's like somehow clearing up a little bit of that top. So it depends on what you like. But anyway, there you go. I got to get to work. I just wanted to put this out because we're going to do a little. Because well, first of all, I needed to know that the cab was good, which it is. But I wanted to run it for like. 15 20 hours you know beat it down a little bit and make sure we're good and it is wow what a great cab those things are built like tanks they weigh a ton too so here you go 
So we'll let this run for a second. We'll wrap this video. So again, this is yellow and red. And then when it gets to here, you'll hear it. And then it's uh, yellow and, oh no, I'm sorry. It's yellow and 808 here and then yellow and red. So yellow 808. time yellow 808 to yellow red yellow 808 It's time, man. It is time to get like the. It's like <laughs> this is gonna be the best sound I've ever had. Oh my god! Wait till I put it all together. So, I think what I'm gonna do <laughs> is that's just crazy sounding. Oh my god! Oh, that's fun. Okay. Hey, you know what? Life. You know, you gotta enjoy your stuff, right? So James, look at the music around the world. Here's like an old for export i think i've got like the little rhythm tracks of around the world All right so let me get rid of this these are my old some old tracks yeah so <laughs> oh man but these are my old mesa tracks this is this is just left and right this is the same amp with the slant cabinet let's see what we get here yeah there it is yeah i think what i'm getting now is is going to be better so well there you go wow so i'll pull these in and then what i have to do is i have to put i have to get my black bless paul and put uh put um what do i have to put on it i have to put uh 11s on it and put it in e flat drop c sharp so here's what we have now those guitar sounds are, i i like those better Does anybody out there know who Greg Cash is? He was my homie and my session bass player for years in L.A. And he played... I, I saw him out here with a girl rock band. It was her name. I can't remember what it was called. But, but he played in like Buck Cherry and all that type of stuff. He's, I mean, that guy's bass playing was just like skinny bass on his knees. You can't teach that. <laughs> I guess you can. His, his dad's a bass player, Buddy Cash. And he plays like that too. So anyway, wow. Yeah, look him up. Greg with two Gs, Cash. Like, you know, do you take check or cash? Yeah, he's amazing, man. Great cash. Good Lord. And that was our drummer at the time. I can't remember his name. I, want it. I don't know. I can't remember his name. But we're we're going to track guitars to this, so I got to go. Yeah, buddy.